What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Icy, my name is Splattercat. Happy to have you here today as we hang out for a while, and I think we're going to walk the frozen wastes one more time. I think we're getting closer to the end of the game, I don't know where this is all going to go with like the Eden and all that sort of fun stuff, but the fun thing about playing a lot of indie games is that you start to get like a sixth sense for when you're coming up on the end of things. Even though they haven't really started leaning that way, I'm pretty sure the game doesn't have like a ton left inside of it. So, in the last episode, let me go ahead and show you what I did. I got paranoid about our food situation, and so I went all the way up and around here, and I just kind of scavenged and walked the entire way back down to here because I think they increased the amount of food. It might be just due to the fact that I increased the difficulty from, like, easy, easy, easy up to normal. That might be it. But either way, our food consumption has gone way up, and we've never had a problem with this before the entire game, but as of right now, we're going through food faster than I can stock it. And so I came over here to hopefully buy, like, a ton of food so that we don't have to worry about it for a while because I just have not been picking up good yields from any of the random events. So we're going to go to the food trader, and I think we're going to buy some quality food, if he does say so himself. And I do think we have a whole bunch of random, like, knickknacks and shenanigans we should be able to unload over here as well to make this a little bit easier. I don't think any of this stuff actually has a use. I mean, I think the sewing kits might, because you could use those maybe to repair your armor. So I'm going to save those just in case, but everything else is looking like I probably don't need it. I don't think I've ever seen like a pack of playing cards come up in a random thing. I don't even think I've seen a 20 pin connector come up in any of this. I just, I don't think I've seen it. So, for right now, how many things am I carrying around? I got a snipey rifle and everything. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's how I feel about that. I don't really need more shovels. I have like a ton of hammers. Like more hammers than you would ever require for anything. I don't know why we need this many hammers, so I'm going to get rid of all of them. I also don't really know why we need this many shovels, so I'm going to get rid of one shovel because we have three of them, and meh. Wait, we have four? Oh, we'll get rid of both shovels then. So we're up to 175. That's 17 food that we can basically buy for free now. That's the way that I think about it in my head. It makes the transaction go smoother. I'm not actually earning money than losing money. I'm just getting free stuff because I'm trading with you. So let's get ourselves some food. I'm going to take that up. About as high as I can go without having to stop. I'd like this number to be in the realm of like 60 to 70-ish by the time we leave. So let's have a look through here. I actually don't think that any of these guns get used by our party. I think our party just has like a basic stat. And then I've seen no difference in the amount of DPS we deal based on the things in my inventory so far. So I'm thinking we might be able to get away with selling off some of these little pistols and things. I just... I don't see people using them, and so I think I'm just going to get rid of them. We have enough guns anyways to wear, meh. I'll probably hold on to the bows or whatever, but I haven't seen enough convincing evidence so far that my DPS goes up based on the amount of guns in my party or anything like that. So part of me is actually sort of interested in getting rid of some of the weaker firearms, especially the ones that seem to be, I mean, then again, they do wear down on their own, so maybe that's an indication of them being used in combat, but I don't know. It's hard to tell at this point. I'm, I'm not really sure. I would love actually for the developers to explain how the combat works like on the forums or something like that so that you could actively play the game properly because as of right now I've been pack ratting everything because I thought maybe it was kind of like Mountain Blade or maybe it was a little bit like Band of Brothers. Wait, not Band of Brothers. What was the name of that game? Hmm, Battle Brothers. There we go. Battle Brothers. Anyways, and Battle Brothers, like, your guys would use all the, like, you would use a little click thing, and they would pick up all the best loot that you had, and they would equip it to make their build as good as possible the whole time, and it made your job very, very easy. However, in this game, I can't really tell if the guns are affecting anything or if they're helping at all, so, pfft, who knows, probably just gonna leave them back there. Ah, he made a fart noise! That's 80% right there of successful YouTubing, just making fart noises. I'll probably take this up pretty high because we don't need the money like we've got more than enough bullets for anything we would ever want to accomplish so I'm gonna deal right there I'm gonna take it all and that's gonna put me at 88 okay so we got 88 food that's actually really really good that'll make sure that we got things covered where are we headed do we have a quest do we have a heading oh wow it's way down there okay well we're gonna scavenge our way down there it's not that long of a walk so this should be a pretty easy going episode Find a safe place. You couldn't find a safe place. Everybody took seven damage. Well, that's lame. Our toes rotted off. That's a little... That's never happened either. I get the feeling they must have patched the game. They must have made it more difficile. That's fine. Whatever. We find an old farm. You managed to search part of the building, but the path ahead of you has collapsed. You throw a rope to the top floor. And then you get... Fuel and five food and also a Nokia camera phone and also another grapple. So that's pretty cool. If I could find myself a rope to go with it. 
if I get a rope to go with it. Oh, I'm going to go down to here. I'm going to grab that because that note allows us to get a bunch of food and a bunch of medical supplies, which I can sell off at no expense to myself. We're going to take a long time to gather... Oh, uh, they nerfed that too. Yeah, that or I just got a bad roll, but that used to give you like 35 food and like... 15, yeah, I think they must be watching my series or something. I'm not gonna be super cocky be like, I think they're watching my series, but I think they must be watching my series. Now, that's all things that I've talked about in the past. The game actually is really, really easy if you're not used to it. You see a body near a cliff, apparently fallen from above. It could be risky to loot the body, but apparently there are items on it. Did it hurt when you fell from heaven? I want the bullets. You find some bullets, but the rocks on where you're standing collapse. Luckily, you managed to hold... Okay, cool. We only hurt our hand. I was like, ow, I scuffed my fingers. My thumb is hanging off in a weird direction by a tendon. Where... We picked up fuel already. Where did that fuel go that we picked up? We picked up two fuel from that last adventure. How come we didn't have two fuel? I know it hasn't been two days. Has it? All right. Well, whatever. Apparently, we went through that fuel faster. Maybe it takes more than one fuel per day, but I thought it only took one. Yay! I'm gonna use a grappling hook to climb to the top of an apartment building. We got another fuel. Oh, wow, we got expensive stuff right there. Okay, take it all. Take it all and put it inside my inventory. I would like to go... This way. Sounds good to moi. Oh, yeah, it must have been two days. Time does go by pretty fast in this game, so it can be hard to judge. It can be very, very difficult to judge. I want to search this abandoned house for all the loot on Earth. And then I'm going to use a crowbar to force open the treasure chest that we found inside because yar, you can't keep your pirate's treasure from moi. I don't know why the pirate randomly spoke French on the end, but he did. He's a French pirate. That's the explanation. It's that easy. He's a French pirate. Duh. <laughs> you see a body? I'm going to fall for this again and again and again because it's free money. And it's super cheap for me to fix that damage. It's not even that diff. Oh, we got fuel from that last one too. That's pretty cool. So does every- Ow, I'm so wounded. Maybe I should stop doing things that wound me. That might be a good idea. Let's never do that again. Did everybody take that? Oh, balls. And I know I'm going to go into combat. And, like, our HP bar is going to be, like, a sliver low on accident. Oh, look, we got a guy named TJ. That's pretty cool. This is what happened after recess. The world collapsed, and then he walks around in a wasteland of haze, just being badass and scavenging things. I'm gonna go six hours, break it with a crowbar, give me that treasure. We got two, oh, we got a bomb though, that's pretty cool. You could say that is the bomb, we got some medicine, we got some, okay, that's, that's pretty cool, I'll take it. I should buy some medical skills, that's what I learned. We need to make like the best use of our medicine now that they've nerfed it and made it like a lot more difficult to heal. It used to be so easy to find like huge amounts of medicine that you'd just be like, ah, whatever, and you would just make it through with like sheer volumes of like, god, we've already lost like a fat chunk of our food right now, this sucks. And we find a completely shuttered store. Exploded! You blow up the door and go inside the building. We got a sewing kit, two fuel, and a torch. Not worth it. Well, I guess the I guess the bomb is worth 30, I think. So maybe it is worth it. I don't know. The bomb is worth 30, so as long as you get 30 out of the building, it's usually not that bad. But I'm gonna go and gather food here. 19 food and five. Maybe it actually looks at the amount of food you have in your inventory. And it gives you a different loot table. I've seen some games that do that where the more dire your situation, the more they give you just as kind of like a gimme. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen right here, so I'm actually going to save real fast. And then I don't remember what is our job right now. Like, what are we trying to do? I forgot to look before I started the episode. Work for Vernon. Ancient laboratory and the missing agent set by Vern in the situation. Okay, so I think one actually piggybacks on the other. What is piggyback? I started watching Moribito last night. Never seen it before. I remember seeing it on Adult Swim like way back in the day, but I like the animation. It's purdy. And so I started watching. I don't know. The characters all have weird lips. If for some reason that makes me watch the show. You arrive at the place where Vernon sent the missing agent. It's an old building, partially collapsed, and no one seems to be around. Suddenly, a woman appears from the ruins. She's walking towards you. She's half naked, and she has white glowing tattoos on her body. Well, that's not good. Hello to you, strangers. She seems untouched by the cold and friendly towards you. If I'm naked and she draws runes all over me, can I not be touched by the cold anymore? That sounds awesome because, frankly, I'm only down to like three toes now. It's bad. What the hell is wrong with your cold perception? She's from the white people. Thanks to some unknown magic in their tattoos, they can resist the cold. It's no magic. It's a blessing given to us to survive in the cold world. 
Too bad the cold is not the only danger on the White Wasteland. I was traveling with a group and we got attacked by some well-armed people. I'm the only survivor and I survived only because I was in the woods hunting. I found shelter here for the night. I was ready to walk my way back home to the home of my people when you showed up. What brings you here, travelers? We're after a missing man that was sent here to explore the building. Then your quest is near its end. Having nothing else to do, I explored the place and I found a dead body still fresh. We, individuals belonging to the white people, shouldn't be too interested in ancient stuff, but I was curious and I explored the building. There's a path leading underground, but it's not really safe, and the man you're looking for discovered it in the worst way possible. His body now lies under the rubble that was once the roof of the corridor he was walking in. I can show you where it is. Cool, we get a naked lady in our party. She smiles gently, follow me, it won't take too long. She brings you to some stairs leading below and leads you through some of the dark corridors and rooms that seem to be almost empty. After a couple of minutes, you reach the place where you see a body of the missing agent. As the woman said, half his body is covered by rubble and he's clearly dead. Man, you, that would suck. Just your eyeball sticking out. So, like, you would be dying, but in the last couple of seconds, you'd be able to, like, see out of the rubble. Like, it wouldn't just go, all go black. You'd be sitting there just like, oh, man. My eyeball is sticking out of rocks right now. What a horrible way to die. It seems like he tried to free himself before surrendering to death. He had his... Freedom! Inspect his backpack. I like his loot. In the band's backpack, there are some plies and a pistola. You take them since there's no reason to leave the stuff here. Now I'm going to inspect his body. Everybody leave the room. It's private time. It takes some time to drag the body out, but you eventually manage to do it without any risk. You search his clothes and find what seems to be an ancient device inside a sturdy metal box. It seems important, and maybe that's the reason why the man was here. Leave this place. Well, he's dead and there's nothing we could do for him. Let's report back to Vernon. You abandon the building's underground and return to the surface. The mysterious woman takes the word. Well, you clearly didn't know the guy or care about him. What's this all about? Some of our people reported increased human activity in this area of the Vale. Ah, uh, believe it or not, we're working for the Eden and the guy in the building was one of them. Not so hard to believe. The founder of our culture and religion came from Eden. We know all about that place. We know it exists, but we were asked not to go around talking about it. I already know more than you think. The founder of our culture and religion came there. Wait, I clicked twice. There we go. Since the man had said the word Eden on his clothes, and as far as the story tells, the place is not far from here, I think you're dealing with Eden's people. So tell me, did I guess right? More or less. Mas o menos. I have no need to know more. I was just curious. I don't want to mess with your business. I just wanted some hospitality to join your family. Yay! Naked lady in our party. Every party needs a naked lady. I was a nomad, and I know the rules for joining a family. I know I'm from the white people, but I'm not breaking any rule of ours. Okay. I mean, my desire to have naked lady in the party is pretty much overriding this one right here. All my pragmatism just went out of the window. Because honestly, I have a fond respect for the female form, and I seek to add it to my party right now. Artistically. She smiles. Thank you. Thank you very much. By the way, my name is Geneve, but you can call me Jan if you prefer nicknames. Traveling with a white one, that's something unexpected. Don't worry, you won't regret having me around, especially if you like to have meat for dinner. And I can show you where our temple is so we can go there. It's just that I met some of your kind years ago and they seem to me like a bunch of crazy people with a crazy religion. You don't seem that unbalanced. It's because I'm not. Some of us see the world in black and white, just like most humans do. You don't have to worry, I won't proselytize around. Can we go now? Not that I enjoy walking, but at least it keeps me warm. You prepare yourself to walk again on the white wasteland, and in a few minutes, you're ready to go. Hooray! Naked lady in the party. That's pretty cool. I enjoy that. Let's go and... What is this right here? Is that naked lady temple? I bet that's naked lady temple. It looks like naked lady temple. Hmm. So, where, where does that leave us here? Go back to Eden. Okay, so we gotta go back to Eden, I guess. Which is over there. And Naked Lady Temple is in the opposite direction. With respect for our supplies. Let's go to the gas station. And see if maybe we can get ourselves... Yay! A treasure chest! Let's go ahead and use a crowbar and we'll... I was gonna try and do something funny with the word treasure, but I don't know. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. We found a treasure chest. I prefer the pleasure chests. Pleasure chests are way better. Didn't somebody have that for a tattoo? They totally did. It was a fake tattoo in the league. That's what it was. There's an entire episode about her tattoo. It says pleasure chest. <laughs> right above her lady bitch. She's got a tattoo. There's an entire episode about that. That was a pretty funny episode. Though. Although the league, like, I felt like they changed writers, like, in season five or something. Because the show got more, like, 
the show got the show was always like outlandish but it was realistically outlandish like it was stuff you could imagine your friends doing and getting into trouble with but like in season five the show got really like out there and weird and then also the characters became a lot less like interesting i guess i think they tried to make it too much about like kevin and his wife that's basically what happened and i think they swapped writers because the next time around in the next season it was all perfectly fine and they're like, oh, okay, well, all right. I think they had, like, new writers on the staff, and then they were just like, you know what? You guys aren't doing it. Everybody hated this season. We're going back to the old writing team. It happens. Writing is a difficult job. You stand in front of Vernon's office. The door is closed, and you know it's better to not disturb him if you don't have anything important to say. He's like, lasers for fun. Oh, never mind. Those are just green lines on the wall. I thought lasers. I thought he had booby traps. He's going to be like, beep, 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 and blow your ass up when you walk into his office. I like Ron Swanson with the claymore on his desk. You enter into Vernon's clean and tidy office. He doesn't bother to raise his eyes from the paper he's looking at before talking to you. I hope you have an important reason to come here. I'm not in the mood for small talk. Found the agent. Really? Since he's not here with you, I assume that he's no longer among the living. That's bad. He was a loyal and capable member of our society. But we can't waste time mourning him. Someday we will honor our heroes, but today we've got some worrisome reports from our outside agents. Vernon's expression changes, revealing his rage and his frustration. We're in danger. All of the Eden is in danger. The Outsiders found us and our home is no longer safe. There are two different Outsiders camps in the nearby area and we don't know why they're here. Well, we know why they came for the Eden, but we don't know their intentions. I want you to go to the two camps and report back about what they want. If they're willing to attack the Eden, we need to know how dangerous they are. And if there's another pressing matter too... Oh, and there's another pressing matter, too. Some strange naked people with white tattoos were seen not too far from here. I want to know who they are. They're the, they're the white tattooed people call themselves the white people. They refuse any technology from the ancient world. He smiles slightly. I've never heard something more idiotic. Well, I just need you to tell me if they could be a danger to us. I can hardly imagine how a bunch of savages armed with sticks and stones would be a threat. What do you need exactly? I want you to answer a simple question. Are they a threat to us? If they are, we'll need to be prepared to defend our home. We can't let barbarians take this place. Alright. Of course you'll do it. And remember that the survival of our home may depend on your actions. So, you know, be quick and be smart. Be quick or be dead! Don't let some fools confuse you with vague promises and absurd ideals. The only thing that matters is keeping the Eden intact. We are the last hope for humanity. Don't you think that's a little bit arrogant? You should be like, no. There are millions of people all throughout this map, and we are the last hope. Not them. We. We do it because we have fancy suits that say Eden. Now go. You have no time to waste. No time at all. No time. There's no time. All right. Well, I mean, I could talk to other people while I'm in there, but honestly, I'm not in the mood for conversation. Let's go fight with some fools. Let's go shoot them in the face with guns. You spot some smoke in the distance and decide to see what's happening. Apparently some bandits were attacked, or some bandits attacked a nomad family. I'm mean, like, that's some mean nomads right there. They attacked some bandits. You find a lone survivor, barely alive, that asks you to give him some food. Otherwise, he will starve to death. I'm going to give you five units. Five units straight to the mouth. And then off to this camp so that maybe we can figure out what they want. Oh, man, we're going to freeze to death in the night. The people's delegation? You walk towards the main tent at the center of the small camp, and you see Robert, Jerome's friend, sitting on a chair inside of his tent. Look who's here. Jerome, aren't you a little old for this kind of life? First thing, you're too old for this shit, too. Second, my companions would get bored without a nice guy like me hanging around. Yeah, maybe we're all too old for that. But when we heard the rumor about Eden, I remember the old days when we used to travel. You remember how we used to try and find a place to stay? A place that we could call home? Well, it's hard to ignore some dreams, even for old people like me. And let's be honest, all those young crazy teenagers need our experience to survive more than one day on the White Wasteland. Let's, we have no time for this. Can we change the subject? Let's interrupt. Can I interrupt you guys? I'm glad you're friends and stuff, but the situation's complicated. We need to talk about it. You're right. Forgive us, old people. We tend to lose ourselves in silly chats. I don't even know why you're here. Well, you're here because of the Eden. That's for sure, but that's all I can assume. Well, we're here to help, assuming that you're not here to wage war against Eden like the mercenaries. Us? Did you look around? We couldn't wage war against a bear. A rumor about the Eden spread around the Vale, and we knew the whole army of mercenaries was directed here, so we came too. The story is complicated, but let me explain it. Alright, keep it short. No problem. Some traveler went around telling people that Eden is real and the Ammo Nation was ready to assault it. I don't know what we can achieve, but I was tired of sitting below the damned wind tower, and I hope to find something better going on here. 
I gathered some people who volunteered to follow me here to talk with the people living in the Eden and to reach some sort of agreement. Are you ready to fight? Because the Eden won't allow any relationship with the outside world. And the best option to get something are the mercenaries willing to assault it. Are you saying that our only hope is to join the mercenaries? We're not real. That's not what I was saying. I was saying you could join us and fight the mercenaries. Are you saying that our only hope is to join the mercenaries? We're not real fighters. I doubt my people could be more than cannon fodder. Uh, it's either that or I guess, I don't know. Hmm. I mean, it's your choice, and I know it's not easy, but it's probably the only thing you can do. All right, fine. I'll think about it, but I need to know what we'll get, or that we'll get something in return. Go to their commander and try to get a good deal for us. Guess it's time to go. I hope to see you soon, old chap. I'm not even sure what I just brokered right now. I just accidentally brokered peace between two groups. Sign me up. You can call me Kissinger. I have words to say. Going to bomb Cambodia for some reason and also have a thick accent and people will hate me in 20 years. Going to hide all records of my life until after I die so that I won't be tried for war crimes. Let's go over here. And apparently we need to go to the mercenary camp. Two guards watch- oh look, you guys have the same tent. What, did you go to the same sports chalet or what's up with that? Two guards watch over Morgan's tent. They let you come inside alone. What you see is Morgan sitting behind a desk with a local map on it. Come in. Why do I suspect that your visit has something to do with the operation I set up? We know about the Eden. It's been two years since I first knew about it and I didn't stop searching. Like it or not, we're gonna take this place. The Eden's people may have some nice high-tech weapons, but we're plenty and we'll still fight to the death to conquer it. And you? What'll you do? Morgan smiles and takes a sip from a liquor bottle. You're one of them, but also one of us, the outsiders, the ones that need to face every day's dangers. Aren't you tired of that? Don't you want to finally control your life and to stop being somebody else's bitch? Join me and you can be my second in command. Help me take the Eden and we'll rule it together. There's a chance you waited for your entire life. A chance to finally control it? I've been controlling it the whole time, man. I click on the map and I go places. I control this whole shebang. It's all real when I'm in the field. Let's see... Well, I can tell him he'll never win the battle. We can go with what do you need. We'll think about the offer. And we can say we're not going to help him. You won't win the battle. I guess I'm going to, I mean, I don't think theft is a worthwhile option here. I think we should probably, wasn't our plan altogether to talk with Boris and like open the place up peacefully so that you could create a city around the Eden that people could trade with and stuff like that? I don't know. You can never win. You have no chance. We have explosives, we have guns, and we have soldiers. I can't think of any scenario where I fail. You will be slaughtered. There are enough soldiers inside the Eden to kill ten times the men you brought with you. Well, actually, never mind. We could go with this one right here. There could be another way to get your hand on Eden's resources, and that way doesn't involve a war and lots of people dying. He smiles at you. I'm listening, but you better come out with something interesting. There's a rebel faction that's working to get Eden open, willing to share its resources. They could use your help, and you'd be rewarded for this. Why should I settle for a little piece when I could simply get all of it? Hmm. You mean a part of something bigger or something better? Or we could say attacking puts you at risk, but right now there are enough resources for everyone, and you could only benefit from an alliance. I don't know. This guy was kind of a dick the whole time. This guy hasn't shown a whole lot of, like, moral acumen. So I don't think, like, pleading for ethics or anything is going to work here. Pleading for the greater cause of humanity. I think this one works. And what should I tell my soldiers? They came here for a war to fight an enemy and loot its riches. You know that they won't just settle down. I... Well, they can have their share. You can stop wasting your words. I'm not here... To get allies or friends. I'm not. Okay, so I guess you're gonna die then. Are you sure about that? You, did you look at how many men I brought with me? Do you know how poorly defended? Did you know how poorly defended the Eden is? Go away and don't bother to come back unless you're gonna join us. We'll win this fight with or without you. I am gonna shoot you repeatedly in the face. My name is. I hate it when people threaten me. When people threaten me, it just upsets me. I don't even care what side I'm on. I've told you guys, that's one of my pet peeves. People threaten me. I, got, I get high feet. It gets ugly. Anyways. I will see you on the next episode. This is Icy. They have tweaked one of my pet peeves, and now I'm going to shoot them all repeatedly with guns. Over and over and over again. How you do, everybody?